Richie, the Edinburgh Fringe, yeah. what is that? Uh, the Edinburgh Fringe is a famous, it's a, it's a famous festival that happens in Edinburgh every year. Uh, one of the most famous arts festivals in the world. You've got comedy, you've got theatre, you've got dance, you've got music, you've got, you know, you know everything. If, if something's an art, it'll be there. What wouldn't be an art? Like smelting. It's an arts it's festival, an arts festival. A festival of the arts and culture. And the entirety of the city is taken over. It becomes a very busy place, a very touristy place. Uh, there's an incredible vibe. All the pubs are open to like five, three to five in the morning. You they like change that? change the lights. <laughs> I used to. Um, so I, you've lived uh, either in Edinburgh or close to Edinburgh for most of your life. Most is of my life. Fair yeah, that's say? fair. Yeah. What is the reputation of the fringe? amongst Edinburgh. What are people from Edinburgh be called? Well, if you were, what are they called? There is a term, but I don't like it. What is it? It's like Edinburghers. I was going to say Edinburghers is a joke. Oh, that's a real thing. So what do Edinburghers think of the Edinburgh Fringe generally? What's its reputation? Well, you know, you get positive to grumpy to cynical to... Uh, the main thing people like to complain about is that when people are visiting Edinburgh during August, they walk very slowly. And a lot of us are just trying to get to work. I imagine people who are visiting the Fringe are sauntering. There's a lot of sauntering. They're There's a lot of gazing. In. They're looking a up. Looking. There's a lot of looking up in Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of things to look up to. So if you live there and you're like, I don't need to look up. I've seen it. I know where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's head down. <laughs> I've seen all the beauty already. I've taken it in. The first few years I was there, I took that in. So it's pavements all the way. <laughs> so Close the curtains. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take a couple of days Arts off. Arts and culture has come to my hometown. Yeah. Lock the door. Lock the door. Close the curtains. So day one, yeah. I headed in by myself. Mm -hmm. And I found a, like a program on the tram. I yeah. had to flick through. There was so much choice. The first thing that happens when you arrive in Edinburgh is you are overwhelmed by the sheer amount of posters. Every square inch of the city has a poster slapped onto it. The Edinburgh Film Festival happens around the same time as well. I noticed there was a big uh, advertisement for oh, that yeah. in the magazine. Do you not think the logo for the Edinburgh Film Festival looks a bit like... Um, like a... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you mean. What do you think the Edinburgh Film Festival logo looks like? It looks like a th it looks like a thong. It looks like an arse. Say again? An arse with a thong. Well, you said it not. That's not <laughs> where my mind went. But if you say, I sort of see what you mean. But you mentioned the posters, of which there are many, and uh, I was I was a little surprised. Like through, by flicking through this magazine and looking at the posters, there seemed to be a lot of LGBTQ. Uh, shows, yeah. so on, and but when I walked around, the uh, crowds. Is that a problem? The, is that train gonna be loud? That's the five circle line uh, disrupting the video. It's one of our louder. Lines. Everyone, do you think everyone can see us? Someone will be looking at the window, going, "What's going on?" Hi. I noticed there was quite a lot of LGBTQ. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Focus. <laughs> Sorry. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but as I walked around Edinburgh, I noticed the crowds were mostly older American couples. So I'm not saying that they're not going to see those shows, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, maybe they're just here for Bobby Davro. <laughs> was Bobby Davro in? Bobby was Davro, Davro was in. Towards, I followed the crowd and there was a Bobby Davro sign oh. where they were all pointing and talking about and getting excited about. I thought, oh, it must be this. But then I noticed what they were actually being excited about was there was a little uh, robot car lawnmower <laughs> going up and down a hill, keeping the grass cut. Okay. And everyone was going wild for this thing. I think it might have been the hit of the Fringe. Oh, I missed it. I'm not, I can't believe. I always miss the best things of the Fringe. Bobby Davro's show was called. Oh, Bobby. Anything is funny if you can laugh at it. Which do you think, is that a reference to when he <laughs> fell on television and his head hit the ground like a dropped watermelon? It could be. 
I mean, and he's like, this. Look at this footage. This happened to me. And according to the comments, everyone thought it was very funny. So I thought, I suppose anything can be funny. <laughs> Either that, either that's an excuse for terrible material. Yeah. <laughs> I found a, a vantage point which gave me a great view of Edinburgh Castle, yeah. a juggler, and anyone who got the shits after too many pints of innocent gun. All at once. All at once. <laughs> they set this stand up directly <laughs> above the toilet. So everyone who went in and out. There you are. Oh, you. Nice. Going to the toilet? Yeah. Going to the toilet, were you? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Edinburgh Castle, I did go all the way up there. Oh, yeah. They have a big stage oh, with the tattoo? set up. So you can sit just about anywhere mm -hmm. and this amazing view of people queuing for an ice cream van. <laughs> the first show that I went to oh, yeah. was a stage production of Dracula that was twice as good as a pasta lunch from Pizza Express, despite costing half as much. So that... <laughs> I'll just give you a second to do the math now. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Dracula was half the price of the pasta Pizza Express. Pizza Express pasta. But it was twice as good as It was as twice as good. Pasta. No, but if it was twice as good as something as terrible as the pasta from Pizza Express, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a good show. Was it so... It was really good. Okay. The Dracula show I went to, it was great. So what was it like a play? Was it a comedy? Was it a comedy play? Was it stand-up? No, was it, it was like a proper a bit proper of theatre. Oh, nice. The thing that I always forget is that every single, your venues are like rooms, usually that was a classroom. In July, it was a classroom. In August, a it's a corner theater. of a pub. I went to see a show and it was in a, when I sat down and looked around, I realized I was sitting in a car park. They just done an incredible job of dressing it. Um, but a lot of rooms, you're in a lot of rooms where they've just put curtains around the walls and just filled it with arse-numbing seats um, and everyone's crammed in watching a, pl a play. It's very... It's kind of amazing how many very, chairs it can be they get into the city. very intimate. Yeah, it must be, yeah, there must be a lot of chairs. A big influx of chairs. In fact, all the vaults... Which then also have to be flushed out again. Well, all the underground vaults in Edinburgh that they talk about, they're just full of chairs. <laughs> I mean... If you booked an escape room experience, yeah. Yeah. I'd say halfway through it, a guy in the corner would start doing 20 minutes about childhood drama. Yeah. <laughs> and then you really have to escape. I know. Uh, while I was wandering around, I uh, went, went into a gallery. Nothing to do with the fringe, but just I was enjoying art and culture in general. Mm -hmm. I was walking to this gallery. Mm -hmm. And on the wall, they had paintings of Funko Pop that were 400 pounds. What? What gallery was... Sorry, my voice has gotten really high. What gallery was that? The, the, the shittest gallery. <laughs> of, uh, uh, the Edinburgh Gallery of shit. <laughs> you know Greyfriars Bob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know like the, the thing about Greyfriars Bob? Have you touched his nose? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's, it was a dog that had the magical ability to make everything around it cost a little more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a yeah. tradition that continues to this day. Yeah. Day two, you joined me. Oh, day two. So day two was the a big day. And you were like, I want a big bun. <laughs> <laughs> and then it started to rain really badly. It, and yeah. then it was like, okay, let's stop eating buns and we'll go see something. Let's oh. soak in some culture instead of water. And we had pims, and lemonade. They hand this machine to me to pay for the pims and lemonade and we're just like, that looks like a speaking spell. And meanwhile, I'm trying not to collapse at the sight <laughs> of the 1950. <laughs> the speaking spell was going, 19 pounds 50. <laughs> Two drinks, 19 pounds 50. I can feel the ground opening <laughs> up below me. <laughs> No money left at that point. It's like, well, we might as well go see a show. And we went to see The Grim. We went to see a show called The Grim. And The Grim was very good. The Grim was very good. And this is just what happens. You stop for any amount of time in Edinburgh during the Fringe. Someone will approach you, start approaching with flyers. This is starting soon. Come and see this. And someone came up and he handed his flyer and he told us about his show. And we're like, oh, actually. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. In fact, our general, the flyering sounds terrible. 
like the idea of being flyered for anything, just someone handing you fucking flyers every 10 seconds. But literally our, almost our, not literally, almost our entire festival experience was dictated by flyers and people pitching shows to us. So, in a way, not in a way, it was a good thing. This was old fashioned advertising where it's like, here's what it is. Yeah. Please be interested. <laughs> the, the only thing I did that did start to try my patience was oh. how many people would say, watch out now. Watch out. Dark yes. comedy. It's comedy, but <laughs> a little, up. a little dark. Up. It's like, guys, are you, a, whoa, it, was like, a, it was, it would start with a comedy, be like, do you guys want to hear about comedy? Do you like, do you like comedy? Do you like comedy? Yeah, who, who doesn't like comedy? Love to Hand laugh. you the flyer. This guy's part. But oh, hold on, stop. Just be careful. Watch, watch yourself, all right? It's dark. Oh, shit. It's very dark. Oh, shit. Not dark. Dark is very, you need to have a, you need to have a twisted sense of humor. It's a pretty. Just, you got, it's very full on, very edgy. Go watch, just watch yourself. Watch yourself. Don't repeat any of the jokes next tomorrow at work because you'll just get in trouble. <laughs> we did get one that was catch him before he's cancelled. Catch him before he's cancelled. Catch him before he's cancelled, guys. I mean, <laughs> so far all the uh, like critics seem to be probably There's fine with it and audiences Chor are enjoying Chor it. Chor but having a great time. He's also seconds away from it's being his, killed his in a big over. prison. We then went to see a free stand-up show about philosophy. The, one of the wonderful things about the Fringe, there's the free Fringe. Obviously, I say to you, free Fringe, and the first thing you think is, that's the stuff that nobody wants to pay for. True, but we went on the website, you go, what's coming on soon? We got a stand-up show that's about philosophy, and I was like, okay, that's enough of a hook to go, you know, let's, that, that'll kill an hour. A mixed bag. It was a mixed bag. A mix, mixed bag would be the correct. I think when you see something bad at the fringe, it hurts knowing that there are a thousand other things happening at the same time. And yeah. thank God, I should have been any, in any other room in this city. <laughs> That's why we're at right now. Worth point out as well, the free fringe is free, but on the way out they're like, give us some money, and then you feel guilty. They will be stand, at they, the you door. Have to, you have to walk past someone holding a bucket. We went to see uh, Star Wars versus Star Trek. That's one of those things, you see the word Star Trek in the title and you go, we like Star Trek, let's go and see that. We'll enjoy that. We'll that's, enjoy that. That's been made for us. And it was, yeah. <laughs> it was the one thing that we went to see that Owen leaned into my ear and said, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really bad. It was really bad. It was like, it was like the worst. When the we most, sat it down. It was like the most poorly organized podcast, I think. There was a screen in front of us and I thought, the font's a bit wrong. <laughs> and I thought that was as bad as things were going to get. Little did I realize that was the least of our worries. Mm -hmm. So there was a host, and I would put all the blame on the host. Oh, no. <laughs> that on, that's on his shoulders. <laughs> the, his guests, God love them, they tried their best. They, I think they did the best they could, yeah. given the circumstances. Yeah. But uh, very... Very poor. Very, very poor. But do you want to say what happened? Whoa, what? The Take end a look at what happened. Well, towards the end, there was a quiz, and the two people on the stage were asked if they could, they could, they were told they could choose someone from the audience, and uh, when it was asked, does anyone want to represent Star Trek? And the room was silent. A good five seconds of like, nobody, nobody. I mean, the room was 95% Star, Star Wars, Wars slugs. <laughs> And then I sort of nudged my arm to be like, well, maybe. And then Owen felt my arm went up and he just went, whoop. <laughs> so I ended up on stage answering Star Trek questions. And I got every single one correct. I blew them away. I won the room. It was incredible. Everybody star was, of the show. Everyone was impressed. Richie Morgan was the star of the show for Star Trek versus Star, Star Trek World. For, for the last five minutes. And what I enjoyed about it was Star Wars was running away with it because he kept going to like, you know, give us a cheer if, if you think Star Trek won that or if Star Wars won that. And just yeah. because the room was so weighted. Towards Star Wars. They kept, everyone was kept voting for Star Wars. Just kept winning. But it came down to points in this quiz at the end and because I was so good, Star Trek won. I brought it right back in. Much to the chagrin of it's all basically the... It's, 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 it's what, what happens is, is, you know, merit won in the end. 
<laughs> that was that, that was a highlight, I suppose. The worst thing we saw was also a highlight. So there you go. That's the fringe experience. <laughs> I like this show is so bad. I'm gonna to have to get up there myself. <laughs> oh God. I, I have yeah, to I've fix got to get up this. a minute and, and sort this out myself if they don't. Excuse me. Just pass pass me the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a solid 10 minute bit on the Grisham. <laughs> <sighs> yes. We rounded out the day with a stand up comedian called Louis Katz. Oh, yeah. American fella. American fella from Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. So well, he, just, he, he just knew what he was talking about. Yeah, well, exactly. You know? He you goes know. a stand-up comedian from Brooklyn. They know what they're talking about. He's a, no, he's, he's a he's, straight he's shooter. He's a straight shooting New Yorker. Tells it like it is. Yeah. He's walking there. <laughs> he is indeed walking. He's walking here. He's walking there. Life's little foibles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Marriage, kids. What are you going to do? Get an old... You know, all the pastrami usual. sandwich. All the usual. Can I get gherkins on that <laughs> pastrami sandwich? Oh, uh, yeah. Life. I try to ride my bike through town. A cabbie said, "Get out of my way, <laughs> you piece of trash." <laughs> what are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> it was great stuff. Again, halfway through, Richie had to get up and do. You know, Do it, his uh, New York uh, was, was, material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every was, time a show is flagging, it's like, Richie, get up there. <laughs> I'll take this. And then you stand by the door with a bucket, <laughs> <laughs> a smaller bucket next to the headliner. <laughs> but uh, that reminds me, Edinburgh is a great place to have your funny bone tickled. Yeah. They're in the middle of Bean Mania right now. Well, be, be. Uh, Edinburgh just got season two of Mr. Mr. Bean, Bean, so everyone's just losing it. They're all like, oh my, it's like the blue car is back. Mr. Bean. You won't believe some of the stuff this guy's doing. You can't move from. He's taking his trousers off at the beach. The guy's blind. <laughs> I mean, we can't talk about it too long. We've got two shots. <laughs> <laughs> One of them I'm not sure we can we use. We can even use, yeah. It's your second day of the fringe, and you say, "I've had enough. Let's <laughs> let's go gaming." We went gaming. <laughs> they got Mario in here. Let's go. <laughs> um, so we went. We went. We went to soak in some culture at the National Museum of Scotland, where we uh, visited the Game On exhibition, which was just essentially a room full of gaming, gaming, old gaming consoles. Did, did you enjoy TV. Game On? I did. I enjoyed did you enjoy Game On getting a lot? away from the Edinburgh Fringe, a once in a lifetime I played, opportunity I, to play to Parappa play the Rapper. Puck Monster, of course. <laughs> well, Puck Monster, yeah. Puck Monster. We, 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 we Edinburgh is in about the throes of Puck Monster. Puck Monster Mania. The best thing. Mrs. Puck Monster. Because it's the, the school holidays, the place was full of kids. And what was hilarious, we don't have a shot of this because it wouldn't have been all right, but there was a <laughs> corner of the room and it was just a bench with mums all looking tired and miserable. They were just sitting. So your favorite thing about the gaming <laughs> no, no, event was the mums. No. I'd have to say, for me, the best thing about Game On was the Rave Racer uh, arcade machine with no steering wheel that you quite admirably oh, yeah. still... Uh, just, uh, <laughs> turning the steering wheel. But these mums that were sitting... You're the back best on thing the mums. But the funny thing was is they had these lights on them. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> these mums were just sitting there like... Oh. I was like, well, again, your favorite thing was the mums. I thought the games were pretty good. The games were good, yeah. It just goes to show you're growing out of games, you're getting into mums. Getting into mums. <laughs> I'm getting, moving getting into right into life. mums. I'm getting right into the mums. Uh, yeah. Hello again, Fife. Oh, that's a shorter train. Is it not mad when it's only two? It's fucking loud, isn't it? I can't believe trains are so loud. you think that thing would be... Um, yeah. Imagine the bridge fell down... Well, while we were doing this, and this was the footage. This was the clip for it. It went down in history. <laughs> it's like we'd have to, like, even though we have to get it to the newsroom as fast as possible, we also <laughs> like, we'll just they're scrubbing through all the footage. What are they talking about? And it was right when you were talking about being into mums. Mums, I really like the mums at the moment. I'm big into them. I do. <laughs> Is there a video game about mums? We then saw a comedian Yoshi's who was Island. a cyclist. It's kind of like a surrogate mother. Wasn't that more like San's mother? Not as in Undertale's. Well, yeah, when I say surrogate, I don't mean like carrying the child. To. That was that was probably the most motherless 
Yeah, game. no, you're right. It was, you're right. It's the most. Uh, yeah. It's most You've gone the other way. Gone the other way. Sorry. Anyway. We went to see a show about a cyclist. Oh yeah. I didn't mention. They sang a song cycling. about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two. It was good. I liked yeah. him. He was good. It was good. Yeah. At that point, mm -hmm. we'd gone to see a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, there was a lot of LGBTQ stuff on at the fringe, and I was feeling more and more like Richie. We gotta go see something gay. And you said, "Fuck that! I want to see a guy solve a Rubik's cube." <laughs> <laughs> and I would have protested more, but like you just looked so angry. We were on our way to see because uh, uh, it's funny because I can say this and no one will identify what show I'm talking about. But we were on our way to see a one-man show about a guy growing up in a town, a small town, that wasn't very accepting, and he was finding himself as a uh, a queer person. And Richie said. I want to go see a show about a Rubik's Cube that I have seen before, <laughs> instead of that. And, uh, For my money, probably the best Rubik's Cube based show of the Fringe. It was, I mean, you... I liked it. It was good. It was it good. It was good. He did this thing with his Rubik's and Cube. And like you promised, very straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose it was. So I would say probably the best part of the fringe for me was the little lawnmower on yeah. the grass. Mm -hmm. What what was your favourite thing? Uh, the gelato. Oh my god, the gelato. Oh, we got some nice gelato. We got too much, we ended up arrested. <laughs> if next year there was a show at the fringe, Richie Morgan, <laughs> Richie Morgan's show at the fringe, the Richie Morgan show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, what would that show be? <laughs> oh, what would it be? Uh, I was thinking the show would be called something like Searching for a mint feast. <laughs> One man search. One man search for a mint feast. You see them on the board. Nobody ever has them, and that'll be my whole. That'll be the, the backbone of my entire stand-up set. It'll be about growing up. Do you think this would be a free show? Oh, absolutely. It's like in a corner of a <laughs> in an ice cream shop. It's the corner of a pub. And finally, why do? the members of the band turn into animals in the middle of Yes's <laughs> music video. What's the music owner video? Of a, owner of a Lonely Heart. Why do they turn into and animals? A, a minute, if you watch the, the music video for Owner of a Lonely Heart, you, the, a minute in, uh, they all turn into animals, the song stops, and then it kicks off again. Why do they turn the into beginning. animals? That's I don't know. <laughs> Richie, thank you very much for bring, taking me to see The Fringe. What was your, what was your, as someone who had no expectation or experience, like what was your feeling coming into Edinburgh and just immersing yourself in all of that shite? I thought that return to me many times is, oh, Jimmy Owen is still... Uh... Jimmy Owen's still gone. <laughs> you know what, I think the Fringe is something it needs to become more accessible, especially to people that don't have thousands and thousands of pounds. But there's no point in being a dick when it's around and being like, Stay away, I hate this, I hate this every year. And it's like, it's just, just a lovely energy. Just just let it happen. There's no, I don't know what I'm saying. It's nice, it's nice. I thought I'm it, glad I engaged in it um, this year after years of not doing it. You know, it was a real, it was a real nice feeling to get back into it. It was nice. It, it's, it's nice, there's, there's lots of like just places and things that don't exist for 11 months of the year. These places only exist for that one month and you go and you can have a drink in some mad bar or go and see music somewhere or uh, watch a man juggle fire outside of a toilet. Like, that's the wondrous thing about it, I suppose. I think if you embrace that you might sit through something bad. Yeah, oh no, you have to, you have you, to accept that like, that's gonna happen. Go see a couple of things, enjoy that some of them are good and that some of them are bad. Yeah. And. But also, for certainly, the rest. if you share the experience with others, yeah, talking about th something you both saw that was bad, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's all, always fun. Over a always, over, over a, a twenty pound pims and lemonade <laughs> afterwards, and you feel special because, I mean, that's the magic of anything live. When you're there, it's a moment in time, and it's a rare and special thing. And of course, if you go and you see something and you really don't like it. You can always go game. You can do that. There's always gaming. 
gaming is bit of Bomberman. Waiting for you. To wait. You can always play Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers again. Yeah. Instead of a once in a lifetime <laughs> human experience, you could pick Yoshi <laughs> and uh, fight against Ganondorf. 